Um, this particular program came around in a peculiar set of circumstances uh, ever since the Warren Commission report came out years ago. Um, we had no guests on this show who will discuss the theory of what assassination itself, assassination itself because of several reasons. I felt personally as a, an individual uh, enough theorists, uh, including Mark Lane, uh, uh, Buchanan, uh, and many, many others, uh, Weisberg had proposed enough theories and the American public was confused enough. Uh, and then about a year ago, uh, the district attorney of New Orleans, Mr. Jim Garrison, came up with something that kind of astounded the world when he had announced that he had solved the Kennedy assassination. Uh, Mr. Moore saw I guess, last week in the, in the course of the conversation, I asked him what he was doing, and he said he was now an investigator for Mr. Garrison's office in New Orleans. And before we knew it, we were talking about some of these theories and so forth. I think I mentioned at that time I was getting a little weary of listening to theories, and he mentioned that Mr. Garrison had new and vital information. From that point, I said on the air that night, uh, I don't know this exact wording, but in substance I said, if Mr. Garrison has new and vital information, it would anyway change uh, the evidence, credible evidence in the case, we would be delighted to have him on the show. We heard from Mr. Garrison by wire, accepting our invitation, saying that he did have, in fact, new evidence that would cast a different light. And for that reason, we invited him on the show tonight. Uh, I hope not to add more confusion. I hope in some way to illuminate what has been going on. Would you welcome, please, Mr. James Garrison. I, I thank you for coming and accepting the invitation, and I hope I did not misstate a moment ago what I tried to say to you in the telegram. Well, thank you for inviting me, Johnny. It's an honor to be here, and I think your, your curiosity and your fairness are in the interest of the American people. Well, as you know, I'm not legally trained or uh, law-oriented, and at one time NBC suggested it might be of some value to have legal counsel out here, and I did not want to do that for the main reason. I thought it might look like we were ganging up on you, <laughs> like this was going to become another showdown or something. And I thought, as a layman and an interest, interested uh, citizen of the country, it might be a little more casual atmosphere if we just talked in this way. And I hope it's all right. It's fine. I wish you'd uh, also ask me any questions of any kind that occur to you, as long as they don't... Uh don't touch on Mr. Shaw. I haven't uh, I I've made a comment about Mr. Shaw since uh, the day we arrested him, and I don't intend to talk about him. Mr. Shaw is under indictment. This is public record, and with, with the trial to come up sometime in February, I believe. We hope. We hope. All right. Um, is it all right with you if I, uh, first of all, maybe give a little chronology of some of your statements uh, concerning the uh, By all means. Case? By all means. Um, a year ago, I believe it was, in February, you announced that you had solved... Now, this, of course, is not all of the statement of a particular day, but parts of it, if it applies. You announced that you had solved the Kennedy assassination. I have no reason to believe that Lee Harvey Oswald killed anyone in Dallas on November 22nd, 1963. That was a news conference a year ago. Um, then, in an AP interview in May, you said the president was killed by a bullet that was fired from the front. There's with men in the front. They had at least one man in the back who was shooting, and another man engaged in a row in Daly Plaza in order to aid those with guns. That was AP interview in May. From a television interview in May, you, these are your quotes, I believe, there were five of them, three behind the stone wall and two behind the grassy knoll, and they're not quite out of sight. And they've been located in photographs. By the process of bringing them out, although they're not distinct enough, you can make an identification, identification from their faces. In the NBC show of July, he said the evidence indicates that he was shot at from two different directions in the rear and also from the right front. Our, and then from the Playboy interview, uh, you said, our office has developed evidence that the president was assassinated by a precision guerrilla team of at least seven men. December news conference, you said it was very large and very well organized in talking about the conspiracy, you said. An infinitely larger number of participants than you would dream. Press release in December. You say one man may have fired from the sewer in Dealey Plaza 
that the development of the likely use of forces of the drainage system does not conflict with the picture of the other major shooting points. Now, in relation to the people involved, you said in an interview in May, there was a mixture of individuals, but the point is they were all anti-Castro-oriented and had been engaged in anti-Castro training. On NBC in July, you said, the assassins were men who sought to attain a radical change in our foreign policy, particularly with regard to Cuba, individuals who were once associated with the CIA, the Central Intelligence Agency. In a UPI release September, you said, it was a Nazi operation whose sponsors included some of the oil-rich millionaires in Texas and elements of the Dallas police force are clearly involved. January press release, the involvement of high officials of the United States government in the affair becomes more and more apparent. Uh, isn't that terribly confusing? And don't you seem to be riding off in all directions? It seems like it, doesn't it? Uh, let yes, me ask it you, certainly does. Right. Let me ask you first, how many hours do I have to answer this list you just went over? Well, I know that we have uh, the rest of the program this evening. I understand that we can't sit here and completely recreate or theorize on what happened. Uh, but I just wanted to get the chronology of the statements. Well, let me see if I can put this in focus. Uh, if I were to say, uh, for example, that an elephant uh, has a tail and he's gray and he has four legs, it would be possible for somebody to point out, just a minute, uh, you just finished saying an elephant had a tail, now you say he has four legs, and now you say he's gray. The point I'm making is that each of these factors is a, is a characteristic of uh, of one being, and uh, in a complex situation like this, it's possible to be standing at a different point of view and describing different aspects. For example, we find that uh, in the group which killed John Kennedy, there are indeed left as well as Americans. It is also true... You say we find. Excuse me if I do interrupt, so we uh, don't get out of We contact. have identified. You say you have identified and have proof? Is it as a fact? Yes. All right. All right. Secondly, we have found that uh, the Central Intelligence Agency, without any question, had uh, individuals who were connected with it involved. You have absolute facts and proof of that? Without any question. Right. I wouldn't say so otherwise. Third, we have found that uh, a number of these individuals are, in their particular political orientation, uh, Reactionary. Now, that doesn't mean that there was any single conservative group involved, because there was not. But it, uh, if I'm talking at one press conference and I'm asked, uh, what is the polit political cast of the individuals involved, I may say, well, uh, as far as the spectrum is concerned, the number, uh, we found a number who were reactionary. Later on, a month or so later, I might be asked, uh, uh, have you found an elapse involved? I answer yes. So it seems like each one is a different answer, but essentially it's the same. In other words, there hasn't been a great deal of change in, uh, in the matter as we see it uh, in uh, the last nine or ten months. Uh, certainly there have been refinements. Uh, my God, uh, an investigation is a developmental thing. If uh, we didn't know more about it now than we knew 30 days ago, we wouldn't be doing much. Yes, there are changes. When you say these things, Mr. Garrison, as we have found, and it comes out in print, people accept this as an established fact. And you say it's an established fact, but it has not been proved in any court of law, has it? I mean, this is what you are theorizing, are saying, but in fact has not been proved. Is that true? It's partly true, except that I'm not theorizing. I'm telling you what we know to be fact, as far as court of law. But nobody else seems to. Seems to what? Seems to know this as, as a fact. But nobody else has looked into it. This has never been investigated before. It wasn't investigated with the federal government. That was no attempt to investigate. That was just an operation to conceal the evidence. To conceal what happened. This is the first investigation they've ever had in the case. What would you call the Warren Commission? I would say that the function of the Warren Commission was to make the American people feel that the matter had been looked into so that there would be no further inquiries, so that the American people would not find out the involvement of elements of the Central Intelligence Agency, and so that they would think the matter was closed. For what possible reason would they wish to do that? First of all, 
I have to identify my answer now as speculation because you're asking me to go inside of their minds. Uh, I think the Pickett answer is better than I. But if you want to know my opinion, I will say it was probably uh, presented to them as a, as a matter of national security. I'm sure they rationalized it in that way because these aren't evil men. These were essentially good men. But uh, the fact remains that their conclusion was totally untrue, patently untrue, and they had to know it. In my judgment, that's your opinion. I think that there is not one person in the United States, Johnny, who has gone through the 26 volumes of the Warren Commission inquiry who does not recognize that the conclusion of the Warren Commission was totally false. Totally. You say you don't believe there's one? I don't think there's one who's gone through the 26 volumes. No. Well, I could give you a list of them. Go ahead. <laughs> Here are the people who came to the conclusion that no evidence of conspiracy existed was reached independently by the following persons. Dean Rusk, Secretary of State, Robert S. McNamara, Secretary of Defense, Douglas Dillon, Secretary of the Treasury, J. Edgar Hoover, Director of the FBI, John McCone, Director of the CIA, James Rowley, Chief of the Secret Service, and Attorney General at that time, Robert Kennedy. The investigation was under the supervision of the commission, was conducted by approximately 30 attorneys selected from 12 states and included professors of law, prosecutors from federal and state law enforcement agencies, and the former police commissioner of the city of New York. In addition, numberless FBI and Secret Service agents conducted various phases of the investigation and submitted over 25,000 reports. Now, when I read what you say, are you asking the American public to believe that all of these men are of such low intelligence or could be so easily duped and not know the facts? I can tell you that none of them have read the Warren Commission or they wouldn't be taking that position. Now, I don't pretend to know what motivates these distinguished men, but I can tell you that I'm no longer impressed by the title of a man and the fact that he's important in Washington doesn't mean a thing to me because I've seen what the members of the Warren Commission did. For example, they concluded that Lee Oswald was the lone assassin, and the evidence is clear that Oswald never fired a shot, never fired a shot. So the fact is that you could give me a list of 1,000 honorable men, and that wouldn't change the fact. That doesn't make it so. Didn't the Warren Commission say, insofar as we were able to determine, Lee Harvey Oswald acted alone, and if there were other assassins, we were unable to find them. I think they probably... There is a difference in them, and categorically saying one thing. The difference is kind of marginal. Uh, I'd say there is a, a saving clause when they add those words, but I think it's much more significant when you consider that the major question uh, by the summer of 1964 was from how many directions was John Kennedy hit? And which shot was the fatal shot? And where was it hit? Now, 18 colored pictures were taken of the autopsy, and 12 black and white. And not a single member of the Warren Commission looked at it. Not one of them looked at it. And surely the reason for that must be that they knew what they would see. Not a single member looked at it. So consequently, right now, today, these men have not looked at the evidence which shows that the... Uh, that the President of the United States was killed by a shot in the front. On the other hand, <clears throat> there is evidence available to the people of this country, if we can just get, get it presented to them, that shows that the President was killed from the front, and that is the Zapruder film. The Zapruder film was taken on the 22nd and showed the assassination. And it shows that John Kennedy was hit from the front with such force that he had nearly blasted out of the back of the car. Yet it's, it's four years since the assassination, and no one here has seen the Zabruta film. Uh, not, not nobody in the country listening to us has seen it, and they probably never will. And the reason they probably never will is because if you look at the Zabruta film, you know without any question that the president was hit from the front. But the question is, if all these honorable men are telling the truth, and if they really have looked into it, why is it that NBC, for example, I know NBC would love to show it, why can't NBC show the Zapruder film? What difference does it matter, Johnny, how many honorable men are involved? 
when the critical evidence when the critical evidence is continually being concealed from the American people. When they can't see the evidence, I don't know. That's a big statement, isn't it, to say that the evidence no, is being concealed no, from the American no, public? No, let me show you some of the We have to interrupt for a second, but we'll come back. I just have to interrupt for commercial education for this evening, and then we'll continue. Right now, take a close look at your hands. The people at the Chapstick Company have, and they've come up with something very interesting. So before you go on to this, I, I have to say as a layman, I find your statement that all of these people, whose names I've mentioned, plus high government officials, are trying to hide knowledge of the conspiracy and the death of the president. I don't see for what possible reason secrets in this country have not been notoriously well kept. Things have a way of getting out any time more than two or three people uh, know it. I just can't understand how you think that these men think they could, could get away with this and for what reason they would do it. Uh, if, if they want to reassure the American public, I hardly think that they would be involved in any kind of complicity, would they in trying to hide information? That just doesn't make sense to me. Well, I agree with you. As a matter of fact, uh, I have uh, not been exactly famous for rocking the boat. I was a true believer until I stumbled into this thing. But let me ask, answer your question by, first of all, uh, giving you a list of dozens and dozens of files which are secret until the year 2039. I have an eight-year-old boy. Before my eight-year-old boy can look at these files, some of them having titles like Lee Harvey Oswald's accessibility to the U-2, uh, the CIA file on Lee Harvey Oswald, uh, the CIA file on Jack Ruby. Before my boy can look at these, he will be over 70 years old. Now, all I can say is there are four long pages here, and they are secret. If there's nothing wrong, then certainly they can open them up. But I can't look into their brains, Johnny, and tell you why they did it. Does this mean, Jim, that you feel any time anyone comes up, say another district attorney in a few weeks, or another citizen comes up and says, um, how do we know only five, sh three shots were fired? I think there were five. And now do you expect somebody to be galvanized into action and make the commission defend itself when these findings were accepted? by all parties concerned, and also accepted by the then Attorney General of the United States, Robert Kennedy. I find it hard to believe that the conspiracy could exist or things could be hidden. In the Warren Report, the uh, uh, Commission's findings, they could find no link to Oswald with the CIA, to Oswald with the Secret Service, to Oswald with the FBI. Uh, why do you insist in the face of that evidence but there was. Of what evidence? Uh, John, I know, I know you won't mind... In their investigation. Of th it. There was never an investigation. <laughs> it, I know you won't mind my being candid and say that, uh, actually, you changed the subject and you've asked me several questions, one involving the Warren Commission and the other involving Senator Kennedy. All right. First of all, okay. let's take the Warren Commission. I'm not at all impressed with the fact that they could find no evidence of a conspiracy. Uh, after going through their inquiry, uh, I doubt if uh, they could find uh, if they could find a streetcar if they had a transfer in their hands and pointed out to them. I think that uh, that they knew at the beginning what they were going to do and what they were going to do was to reach a conclusion that Oswald was the lone assassin because he was dead and because the Central Intelligence Agency was deeply involved in the assassination. Was their action fraudulent? Yes. Is it unusual for people of such stature? Yes. But the fact remains that they did it. Now, with regard... No, you say, wait a minute, you say the fact remains again, as if it is a fact. You keep saying we know, and the fact is, but take, that's not a fact, is it? Yes, let me take what one What makes point. it a fact? Because you say so? No, not because I say so, but because the evidence indicates that Lee Harvey Oswald did not fire a shot. But will you concede that the Warren Commission reached the conclusion that Lee Oswald shot at the president from the, the, president from the depository? I will. All right, now let's, let's look at the facts. The facts are that they couldn't find a single witness out of all the hundreds and hundreds of people in the plaza to say that Arthur was at that window until the Arthur was dead. 
And finally, one man who initially had said that he was not awful to Wingo, a man named Brennan, finally agreed that it was. No one else out of the hundred saw him there. Actually, oh, I, I have to take issue with you. What's the name of it? other people did see uh, people in the window. Not a man in the window and identified him, his characteristics, his, his height, uh, his, his clothing. Are you talk no, that's not correct. If you're talking about Arnold Rowland, he said that the man in the window had on a yellow shirt and he had another, uh, there was another man, a very dark man with him. Uh, the first part of his statement does not point to Oswald because he had a dark maroon shirt on, and further it points away from the lone assassin. No one else other than Brennan indicated they saw Oswald in the window, and Brennan himself said it was not Lee Oswald the first. No, he described the man, and that broadcast was put out for a man of that description. And when he was shown Oswald's picture, he said it was not Lee Oswald. That was his first position. That was his first position. Can you name anybody else who saw Oswald in the window? I would have to take out the report. Yes, there were other people who saw a man up there and gave a description of him, and that was why Oswald was, uh, was picked up. If you take the afternoon paper in Dallas on November 22nd and read the statement, for example, made by Otis V. Campbell, who was vice president of the book depository, you will read that after the assassination, he went inside the book depository and he saw Lee Oswald on the first floor. If you read the statements of Officer Marion Baker and Roy Cooley, mm -hmm. you will read that they came running in shortly after Campbell went in, and in running up towards the roof, they saw Oswald on the second floor. If you look at the fingerprint results, uh, for the rifle, you will find that Oswald's fingerprints were not on the rifle. Just a palm print. The palm print was not confirmed by the federal government either. That was an announcement for the Dallas police. You'll also find that no test was ever made to see whether the rifle was fired. You will also find the young lady named Vicki Adams, if you look in volume 12, was on her way down from the fourth floor during the time that Oswald was supposed to have descended and no one passed her at all. Jim, what are you doing? And I'm not saying all of these things are factual. Aren't you taking inconsistencies in testimony uh, during the emotion of the time, even self-contradictory testimony from even sometimes the most truthful of witnesses, and using that as tainting everything else that is very well explained? Uh, can we come back and follow that up in, in a moment? The fact that Mr. Garrison is kind of say where we were. I will agree with you, but you want to go right ahead and make this communication. Then I'll yes, let me ask, answer your last question. In effect, you said, uh, aren't you taking advantage of the fact that uh, many witnesses were uh, excited, moment, and confused, and so forth? Uh, let me reply that uh, I can't change the fact that it was an unusual moment and there were uh, many people who were emotionally affected by what happened. However, we have located with, with no trouble many, many people who heard shots coming from the area of the Grassy Mall. Uh, practically none of these people were called by the Warren Commission. On the other hand, the Warren Commission barely presented one person Mr. Brennan, who initially insisted that he couldn't identify Oswald. I'm simply saying that whether they were emotionally affected or not, they should have called in some of the others so that they could have found out what happened. For example, among the many, many people who heard shots coming from the area to the west of the book repository are Dorothy Ann Garner, Otis Williams, Otis Campbell, Mrs. Avery Davis, Mr. and Mrs. Newman, Mrs. Dolores Kunos, Stephen Wilson, Danny Ars, Jim Hicks, and many, many others. Uh, practically uh, all of these people were ignored by the Warren Commission. My point is they didn't look into it because they didn't talk to anybody who heard the shots coming from anywhere else. In other words, they didn't want to hear a thing that did not incriminate Lee Arthur. Isn't it a fact that many people, depending on where they were standing that day, heard shots coming from where they, in relation to where they were standing, as in the unique uh, arrangement of the buildings there, and even discussion with witnesses, they said they really couldn't tell. It could have been a reverberation, it could have been an echo, but that even again does not change the 
the overwhelming evidence, does it, in any way? I mean, somebody who's not sure where shots come from, how does that in any way change the overwhelming major revelations of the case? First of all, there is no overwhelming evidence that Oswald shot from the book depository. The only evidence available indicates that he did not. Furthermore, of all the major conclusions reached by the Warren Commission, the only one that's true is the conclusion that Jack Ruby shot Lee Oswald. And they had to say that because everybody in the country saw it. In your opinion, that's the only conclusion I reached. Uh, hardly the major conclusion that many reasonable people have accepted. No, you cannot say that that's the only conclusion they came to. They came to many conclusions or what presumably or what possibly did happen with all credible evidence available. Having gone through the 26 volumes, Johnny, I can say that it is not possible for a reasonable man to conclude that the Warren Commission was right. Well, then you are accusing, uh, if you say there is a conspiracy involved in this, doesn't it have to be one amazing conspiracy, uh, Mr. Garrison? I mean, if you say this is a conspiracy, doesn't this have to involve the CIA, elements of the Dallas Police Force, the doctors at Parkland, the doctors at Bethesda, the members of the Warren Commission themselves, the district attorney? Doesn't it have to involve all of these people? No. Now, let me answer this and get this clear once and for all. The doctors at Parkland found, concluded, that the shots came from the front to the last man, Dr. Perry, Dr. McClellan, Dr. McClellan's... Uh, Why did they come to that conclusion? Because they looked at the body of the president. Now, let me finish this point. But they didn't turn it over, did they? Well, John, if there were shots from the front, what difference does it make if there were shots from the back, too? Uh, Oswald was behind the president. He can't produce shots from the front. Well, Mr. Garrison, you said that they all agreed there were shots from the front. In the confusion of the autopsy, all the doctors involved, and, and after speculation, including Dr. Perry, admitted that they did not at the time. There were the use of uh, penetrating wounds used. Some people have changed that to entrance wounds. They were involved in saving the president's lives, but all of the doctors agreed that Bethesda and the final autopsy, the shots came unequivocally from above and behind the president. This is not the conclusion of all of the doctors. For example, if you will look at Commission Exhibit 392, you will see the cause of death written down at 445 on the afternoon of November the 22nd by Dr. McClellan, and he says the cause of death was a gunshot wound of the left temple. Everybody who has a Warren Commission in their library can go look at Commission Exhibit 392, and they will see a gunshot wound to the left temple. Was that the doctor at, uh, at Parkland? Yes. But that wasn't the final autopsy, and that was not the final autopsy after you had a chance to do it correctly. That was done very quickly under great strain with trying to remove the president's body from death. I think, Jim, and I'm sorry, and we're gonna, I don't want to throw something at you and then cop out on it. But I think we're starting to rehash things that have been rehashed so much. Else. Why don't we go on to this new evidence that you... Uh... Fine, but I must say this. When you talk about an autopsy being performed correctly, I think you're talking about Samantha Hume's autopsy. I'm talking about the doctor. That's it. That's it. We'll all agree. Yes. So this, is one, this is certainly the first autopsy in history in which the doctor performing it found it necessary to burn his notes out. Now, I don't know what he did that caused him to burn his notes, but I can't view that as a correct autopsy. Is that a fact? Of course it is. It's, a, it's admitted in the Warren Report. Now, let me go to something else. Let me show you, with a few examples, uh, the technique that the federal government used to distort and conceal evidence. For example, uh, one of the... Now, again, when you say, let me show you methods, and I hate to interrupt, yeah. but when you make a statement that let me show you methods that the federal government used to distort, uh, that is not a fact, is it? Is this what your opinion is, or the way you think it happened? Now, you understand that I'm a human being, and it's very difficult for any human being, including a scientist, to speak with total objectivity. So, when I say, let me show you some examples of how distortion was accomplished, Obviously, it's, these are examples about how I think it was a company. All right. You may or may not agree. All right, that's okay. what I wanted to make clear. All right. Now, if you look in the Warren Commission report, especially in the exhibits, uh, you will see Julia Ann Mercer's statement 
There's an affidavit sworn to on the station that indicates the Sheriff's Department, County of Dallas. And uh, the fact, uh, as it's described in the Warren Commission, indicates that Julia Ann Mercer, an hour or so before the assassination, was proceeding by the grassy knoll when she was stopped by traffic. And she happened to be next to a truck. A young man was getting out of with a rifle. And she was stopped where she had to look inside and see the driver. Now, the Warren Commission exhibits indicate to you that she could not see the driver clearly and that this truck had air conditioning written on the side. Actually, in spite of the fact that this young lady saw a man getting out of the grassy knoll with a rifle, she was never called to the Warren Commission. Uh, they didn't call anybody who had evidence that conflict with Oswald was alone assassin. Oh, may I interrupt again? Okay. In her affidavit, she says, uh, on the driver's side of the truck, there were printed letters in black, oval shape, which said air conditioning. She said, I could not see the driver too clear. And then it has her signature here, and then it's certified to by Indo Republic. Mm -hmm. When I showed this to Julie Ann Mercer, she stated this. The signatures on this affidavit are not mine, but are very good imitations except that the capital A is not close. Incidentally, this is published in the Warren Commission. Mm -hmm. That's for Exhibit 5323. I did not sign anything of this kind, and furthermore, there was no woman present at any time when I was questioned. It is not true that the truck had air conditioning printed on the side. I repeatedly stated that there was no printing on the side. I did not say that I could not see the driver too clearly. The fact is that I looked right in his face and he looked at me twice. This is why I was able to recognize him when I later saw him shoot Oswald on television. In other words, she was stating immediately that she recognized the driver of the truck from which the man got up with a rifle as Jack Ruby. As a matter of fact, she stated in her signatures right here that within 24 hours after the assassination, the Federal Bureau of Investigation were showing her pictures which included Jack Rook, and they omitted this from her printed statement. Here's the FBI statement. On the driver's door, the words air conditioning were printed in black letters. And then it goes on to state that she saw the driver, but it doesn't give his name. In the separate FBI report, it said she could not identify Jack Ruby's picture. Her answer is this. Four pictures were selected by me as the driver of the truck. One of them was Jack Ruby. I remember seeing his name on the back of the picture when they turned it over. I again recognized Jack Ruby when I saw him shoot Oswald, and I said to my family, who were watching TV with me, that was the man I saw in the truck. And she also wrote here, it was November 23rd, the day before Ruby shot Oswald, when I picked out the picture of Jack Ruby. In other words, she was shown Jack Ruby's picture with his name on the back within 24 hours after the assassination, more than 24 hours before Arthur was shot, and there's not a hint of this in the 26th volume. This is her is that Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Mercer's statement? Yes. But it is not. The, the writing is a true statement. The printing is a false statement. Are you saying by that that the somebody changed that testimony? Of course. Is well, that what fact? possible reason would they change it? Well, I think you'd have to talk uh, to the sheriff's office, Johnny, and also to the FBI. The young lady told me, and I have her signature here, that she never said that. I well, guess with Adam Sheehan at that time, this is the same Mercer, I assume, that Mark Lane also interrogated to put his gun on, on the grassy knoll. No, no, I don't think the, I don't think anybody talked to Julia Mercer because she was threatened and left very early. Well, in the... Um, I think you're thinking of someone else. I think you... No, did Mark Lane talk to Mrs. Mercer about an air conditioning truck in which she said that first her statement was he took a tool box out and then later it became a gun case? And according to um, <coughs> testimony, uh, I read the one commission later checked and found that the, the air conditioning truck belonged to a firm that was doing work on a building nearby. Julia Mercer never said at any time that there was air conditioning on the side of the truck that was put in because later on it was not her statement. She has said here within the last several weeks and signed her name that this is not true. 
It's a false affidavit. Her name was forged, and it was Jack Ruby driving the truck. This is also Mrs. Mercer's statement, one of 60 odd also statements, depositions taken by the FBI, by other people who saw at one time or another there, uh, people carrying guns, uh, riding various cars, and uh, they were also taken by the FBI? I don't know about all that. Look, let's don't get away from the point. The no, but let's put it in context. No, put it in any context. The point is, this lady saw Jack Ruby driving a truck. She says she did. She yeah. says she did. That doesn't make it a fact, does it? What time does this thing play? I don't mean to sound like an interrogator. I'm only asking questions I don't understand. What well, time was this supposed to take in place? About an hour before the uh, the assassination. But look, uh, but at that time Jack Ruby was in the office of the Dallas Times. How do you know? How long was he there? Well, he was there between eleven and eleven thirty, placing an ad for Master Ceremonies for his club. Aren't you aware that there was a space gap between the new two newspapers when he went from one to the other, a 20-minute space gap, and they don't know where it was? But you're going to put him in a, in a, in a truck. No. I'm not going to put him anywhere. The point is, she was there. Does, she that, was does, there. That, does that not implicate the Dallas police? I think you would like pictures better. No, but doesn't that implicate the Dallas police? They're implicated. How do you think they did it? How do you think they did it? Well, I don't know. Have you have you taken anybody to court? How, how can you accuse the Dallas police of being involved? All right, just one question at a time. You can right. be I'm sorry I didn't mean to. Huh? An advertisement again? Not an attorney. Okay. we got to have some money to keep this thing going. Uh -huh. All right, uh, Jim, we're back now. Let me just make this uh, one point. You said that uh, uh, you uh, the cases aren't coming up. I mean, let me answer by saying, uh, uh, in, in the land of the blind, the one-eyed man is king. Nobody else has charged anybody. We've made three charges. One man has been convicted. We're trying to get the other man to trial. He postponed the case for six months. And it's convicted of three, right? Yes, oh. it's the case. And a third man is fighting extradition. We're going as fast as we can, John, with five men. Remember, it took 6,000 men to do nothing. We're moving with five. If it's a little bit slow, I apologize. <laughs> You mentioned at the end of your Playboy article in relation to that, if it takes me 30 years, I'm going to bring these men to justice. That doesn't sound like you've got a very strong case. Can this go on forever? When, are, is, when is somebody going to get this into court and either prove it or not prove it? Let me answer by saying we set the case for trial last fall, and the defendant moved for a six-month continuance. I think you could get your answer better by contacting the defense lawyers. We're trying to get it to trial. All no, right, go ahead. Now let me read to you an affidavit, which will indicate to you the technique the federal government used in this investigation. This is an affidavit sworn to by Mark Lane, who is not only a distinguished author, but is working for me as an investigator for nothing and helping me. Mark Lane has sworn before a notary that on, in January 1968, he interviewed William S. Walter in New Orleans, Louisiana. Mr. Walter informed me and Annalise Lane that he had been employed by the FBI during 1963. He said that he was a security clerk and was assigned to the New Orleans office of the FBI. Walter said that during the morning of November 17, 1963, he received a TWX message directed to all southern regional offices of the FBI. The message advised that an attempt to assassinate President Kennedy would be made in Dallas on November 22, 1963. Walter stated that as he was alone on duty on a midnight to 8 a.m. shift, he immediately called a special agent in charge of the New Orleans office, Mr. Maynard, and informed him of the contents of the message. He was then informed to call a number of FBI agents in New Orleans who maintained contact with various informants. Walter also told me that an FBI directive ordered the New Orleans office to direct the various agents who had conducted interviews regarding the assassination of President Kennedy to examine those interview reports to make sure that there were no conflicts contained within them. The agents were ordered to resolve the conflicts, prepare new reports, and to destroy the old one. Another example. What does all of that mean? It means whatever you 
choose to, to have it mean. Again, uh, if you ask me... If but if somebody's saying something, is, is that, did that actually happen, or...? I mean, you said that Mark Lane said that a man told him, but did it actually happen? If you fly down to New Orleans, I can show you these people talking. But you just invited one person up here, I'm telling you what they said. Each time I tell you, you say, is that a fact? All I can say is that it appears to me to be a fact. If you want to reject it, you can. But let me show you some pictures, and if you want to reject these, go ahead. In the 26th volume... You're not on trial, Jim. I'm just asking. That's really, I... Yeah, but I'm afraid another advertisement may be coming up. You're right about that, too. In the, in the 26 volumes, there is no reference to any serious sort of arrest. There are a couple of references to short dialogues, and then the indication is that the man wasn't uh, of any value or any importance at all. Actually, at Dealey Plaza, there were 10 men arrested, and this has been kept secret for more than four years. Here are the pictures of five of them being arrested, and they've never been shown before. Well, I don't know. Several of these men... Several of these men arrested have been connected by our office with the Central Intelligence Agency of the United States government. The probability is that this is why Officer Tippett was killed. Is this speculation positively? And I want to identify it as that. But the pro probability appears to be that the killing of Tippett was the diversion which allowed them to turn loose these ten men. Here's some more. And here's that the problem. Won't really, it won't show us, Jim. But why aren't they mentioned? Why aren't they mentioned? They're not yeah, mentioned but you say all. speculation and the probability. Uh, no, no, no. I don't understand. Who's suppressing all of this information on whose order? I'll tell you who's suppressing it. The federal government is suppressing it. Who in the federal government? The administration. The administration of your government is suppressing it because they know that the Central Intelligence Agency... And whose order? on the order of the President of the United States. Who do you think issued... Let me finish now. I don't say anything. Before the advertisement. The executive order, which forbids every person in this audience and every person listening to this program, which forbids them to look at this evidence until September in the year 2039, was issued by the President of the United States. Does that answer your question? He's suppressing it. For what possible reason? Why don't you ask him, John? I know what he said. I think he would say because, first of all, Mr. Garrison has come up with no credible evidence to support any of his stories. Well, let me reply to that, that I am not allowed as an attorney to come up with evidence until the case comes. Why don't they just let me fall on my face? Are you willing to say tonight, when your trial comes up, that you'll secure a conviction without the shadow of a doubt? I cannot make a statement which would reflect on Mr. Shaw. Since the day I we charged him and arrested him, I have not made a statement which inferred that he's guilty, and I cannot infer that now. But I am trying to tell you that there is no question as a result of our investigation that an element of the Central Intelligence Agency of our country killed John Kennedy and that the present administration is concealing the facts. There is no question about it at all. That is your opinion. No, it is not. I know it. And if you will just wait, you will see that history will support this as fact. Jim, I really don't know where to go on this. Um, we could pursue this, uh, I suppose, for hours and hours. We've been out here almost an hour tonight. And I, I have to say, as a layman, uh, I am still quite confused. Um, I don't understand, as you say, this will come to trial eventually. Uh, but it could be years, could it not? Not as far as we're concerned, we're pushing for trial now. There won't be any continuances asked for by my office. Oh, could I ask you one other question? When the evidence against the commission which you have nothing to do with and refute, I guess almost in total, outside of that Ruby killed Oswald. But in lieu of that evidence, 
Uh, which you say, I think you said, was a fairy tale, if I'm quoting you right. That's a conservative discussion. All right. <laughs> you, are, you are asking us and the American public to believe that a team of seven gunmen carried this out with precision, firing from various points uh, that day in Dallas, uh, which is a remarkable feat in itself, and it disappeared in the thin air with no witnesses who ever saw any other gunmen or getaway vehicles, uh, and a gigantic conspiracy in which nobody seems to have yet proved anything. You ask us to believe that. I find that a much larger fairy tale than to accept the findings of the woman report. Let me reply to you by saying, first of all, that these men did not disappear in the thin air. A number of them were arrested, and I just showed you pictures of them being arrested. I presume you accept that as a fact. You can see them in the pictures. No, sir, I don't accept that as a fact. Oh, I don't know who those men are, and I don't know for what reason they were arrested, and how can you say that the assassins were arrested and then returned loose? Is what you're saying? Uh, some of them were arrested, yes. Now, let me go on. And then were subsequently turned loose? They were turned loose later in the afternoon. Now, yes, but let me go to the second point. The second point is to point out again the fact that uh, you see no evidence and the matter doesn't seem to come to trial. We are pushing for trial, and there's nothing more we can do than try to get the case to trial. Let me sum it up by saying... Am I asking the people of America to believe this? I'm doing more than that. I'm trying to tell the people of America that the honor of this country is at stake. And if we don't do something about this fraud, we will not survive. And there is no way to survive if we don't bring out the truth about how our president was killed four years ago. And the investigation by the Warren Commission wasn't even close.